Today we're going to be talking about a fairly interesting interview question I was asked recently in an interview. I think it's a very good question for a number of reasons. I'd like to go through my solution, uh, the things I think I did well, and the things I think I didn't do so well. It also gives us a chance to talk about a less well-known but very useful construct, the deferred promise. Let's go ahead and talk about the question. Basically in the question or in the interview, I was given a single function, await function get feature flag. The usage is like this. You go ahead and pass your feature flag and then you get a boolean value back, true or false, which can allow you to conditionally change something like the user interface. The question required me to build a robust system for handling feature flags in a very large complex application. I think this is a good question because it leaves a lot of room for exploration and for candidates to show off the different things they know. I'm going to go ahead and show you my answer and how I approach this. So the first thing I like to do is get something very basic working, uh, just to show that I understand how to code and what things are good and bad about my solution. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and use this function we're provided with, fetch all features, which is just emulating a backend call. We're going to go ahead and await for the result of fetch all features, which is going to be a record of feature flags. I'm going to call that one flags. Finally, we're going to go ahead and return the value if it exists. Let's go ahead and try this out. So we can see this is returning undefined because this feature flag does not exist in, in the record. Uh, there's a couple of issues here. We'd like to return either true or false and undefined is not true or false. So one way we could solve this is simply by having a default value. I think this is a pretty reasonable solution since uh, either way you're going to have something to render and this is going to ensure the user interface does not unnecessarily degrade. Uh, this is one solution and I'd like to show another solution as well and that would be to throw an error if the key doesn't exist. For example, we could go ahead and do a check and say something like if, uh, we'll check the flag, if not flag, in flags. We're going to go ahead and throw an error here just to tell the developer that their feature flag does not exist. Maybe they forgot to add it to a database or maybe they made a typo in their code. We will just go ahead and say throw a new error and say something like uh, flag was not found. Otherwise, we're going to return the value. If we go ahead and try this one out now, we are going to get that error. Uh, so at this point in the interview, uh, thanked me for showing two different solutions and asked me what my recommendation would be. Uh, I think there's no, no right or wrong answer here. From my point of view, if I ever see an asynchronous function, I know it's going to resolve or reject and you really do want to be handling both of those cases. Uh, the downside is if you have hundreds of feature flags, you're going to have hundreds of try catches throughout your code base uh, and it's very easy to make a mistake, forget to try and catch an error and then you're going to have an unhandled JavaScript error. So with that in mind, maybe we don't want to do this and we're better off just going with the default route like this. I think these are both pretty reasonable solutions. Uh, there's still a possible error here that we haven't handled and that's in the case of the network being down. Maybe the feature flag service is not working and this uh, network request is going to fail. So we do want to find a way to handle that gracefully as well. We could go ahead and do a try catch inside of here and just handle this in the off case it fails. All we would do is move all our logic inside of here and then by default we would just go ahead and return false. Uh, this way even if my network call rejects, so for example I go ahead and reject inside of here, uh, inside of the promise, you can imagine exactly what's going to happen here. We're just going to go ahead and return false. Let's go ahead and try it out and sure enough we are returning false even though our feature flag service is down. So this is another way to handle it as well. Uh, at this point we'd like to talk a little bit more about how this scales and we do have a potential issue here. Just going to go ahead and remove these to make it a little bit more simple. Right now we're making one network request because we're only requesting one feature flag. We do have to ask ourselves how this is going to scale across hundreds of developers though. What happens if we do this four times? Well, you know exactly what's going to happen. We're going to have four network calls. Uh, they're all going to basically return the same data set and this seems like quite an oversight. We only really want to make one network call to get all of our feature flags. So let's think about how we might fix this. Uh, and then there's a kind of naive solution, it doesn't work, but we're going to go ahead and explore why it doesn't work. And that would be by creating a variable here called flags. We're going to do some very simple caching. If flags doesn't exist, we're just going to go ahead and await for them. And if it does exist, we're just going to go ahead and return the value. Uh, just to illustrate how this works, let's give it a try. I'm going to save it off, head back to my browser and refresh the page. Unfortunately, this does not work. What's happening here is we're launching four network requests and before any of them have resolved and got our value back, all four of these network requests have been launched. So this conditional check is not going to work. Uh, the reason it's not going to work is this is a synchronous function. So we need some other way to handle this. Uh, this is kind of a tricky one and if you don't know the solution, it can be very difficult to work around this. 
I have worked on projects that had this problem before those, and I knew about a construct called a deferred promise, which I'm importing here from npm. Uh, this is kind of how you handle this conditional check with an asynchronous function, and I'm going to show you how it works right now. What we're going to do is change this flag to be called dfd, which is going to stand for a deferred promise, and we're going to do something a little different inside of here. We're going to see if this one exists so the very first time around, and if it doesn't, we're going to go ahead and create it. A deferred promise has three properties. It has promise, resolve, and reject. So it's like a promise, but it has two additional promise uh, properties, or rather it has one additional property, the actual promise itself. So what you need to do is say deferred promise dot promise, and then you're going to go ahead and assign it to the value, something like this. Finally, we're going to return dfd dot promise, and then we're going to go ahead and resolve the eventual value. In this case, it is going to be our flags, and all we need to do is go ahead and return our value. Uh, this does a little bit, look a little bit confusing. Let me go ahead and show you how it works, and then we're going to talk about exactly what is going on here. So I'm going to return to my browser and refresh this. Uh, we are actually getting an error here. It's probably because I have made a mistake. It says, cannot set properties of undefined setting promise. Uh, let's see if we can figure out what the problem is here. Uh, I think it's meant to be simply, we didn't instantiate this. It should be equal to a deferred promise. Now that we've done that, everything should hopefully be working. And you can see we have one network call and four results. So this is actually working correctly. Basically the way a promise works in JavaScript is it's going to wait when you call then until the value has resolved. So until this resolve callback is called. If this is already being called, the promise is immediately going to resolve with the value. So you can just return the promise and then if the promise hasn't resolved, it's going to wait. If not, it's going to be immediately resolved here. And that's what's happening here. Uh, so this is kind of the opposite side of the conditional check, but it works in an asynchronous fashion. Uh, let me just drive this point home one more time by creating some code over here. I'm going to initialize a new promise that's going to resolve to foo after 10 seconds. We're then going to go ahead and do a console log and you can see nothing has happened here because this promise hasn't resolved. If we just wait briefly, it's going to resolve and then we're going to get our foo value. And there we go. If I call it again, it's not going to wait. It's actually resolving immediately, showing exactly what happens. This is kind of illustrating the deferred promise pattern. And this is a pretty interesting and elegant solution and one I am pretty happy with. Uh, so I am pretty happy with this solution and this is kind of where the interview ended. We did talk a little bit more, but um, I think the crux of this was showing a couple of different ways to handle this feature and if also to show off your ability to handle asynchronous functions. And if you knew about the deferred promise, that's kind of a nice little bonus as well. Uh, all in all, I think I did okay in the interview. I still haven't heard back, but I will give you an update and see how things turned out. That's all I've got for you and I'll see you in the next video.